Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the expert tips for LR time lapse. And before we start, I would like to say a big thank you to all of you who watched my 10 years documentary. The film about my journey with LR time lapse. Thanks so much for your overwhelming feedback. That really, really means a lot to me. In today's episode of the expert tips, I would like to speak about one of the major annoyances when working with Lightroom. Sometimes images that look really similar and have exact the same editing will get a different look by Lightroom, which is of course not good for our time lapses and leads to weird visual results. Today I'm going to explain why this happens and what you can do to prevent it. Okay, I have a short sequence here, a behind the scenes shot from one of my Northern Lights excursions. Just 30 frames, but that's enough to show you what happens. Okay, I already imported this into Lightroom. For such a dark sequence, you would raise up the exposure, just bring down the highlights a little bit, then bring up the shadows and uh, maybe a little bit whites and down the blacks. You get a lot of noise here which we can of course reduce by using a fair amount of noise reduction. Take care of the white balance. Additional tools that are very common are dehaze and clarity. So people just bring in the dehaze here, let's do it. And let's also bring in some clarity. Okay, I will save the metadata as always from grid view. And now I'm back in LR Timelapse Reload Auto Transition. This means we have the whole sequence edited the same way now. I click on visual previews and let's see what happens. So you can see this is a quite bumpy line here. I'll select a reference area here to see the luminance changes only in this part up here. And especially this one is very interesting here because we have two very dark images and one that is very bright. And this is not what we have in the original images. Let's turn off the visual previews. The whole sequence has basically the same luminance here, but after editing, we now have this strange contrast change. It's really interesting to try to figure out what's happening here and why this huge change in brightness is happening for images that were shot with the same camera settings were developed with the same editing tools in Lightroom and still they look so different here. Let's see which of our Lightroom tools causes this problem. I will show all my columns here. We'll make it very easy to try to figure out what's going on. So the first thing that I always suspect is dehaze. Therefore I go to the dehaze column here, right click and initialize this column. Now just by clicking on save, our time lapse will regenerate the visual previews and we'll see how the sequence looks without that dehaze. As you can see, dehaze is not our enemy here. Another thing, clarity. Let's initialize clarity column, save. Turns out clarity is also not the culprit here. Okay, let's try the highlights and the shadows. Let's start with the highlights, initialize and the shadows. I'll do both because they go together. Oh, look what we have here. Now we have a straight line again. Of course, images are quite dark, but the contrast flicker is totally gone. And this is really interesting because just by removing the shadows and highlight settings from our editings, we got a very straight line without that added contrast flicker. Now we only need to find a way how to compensate for those highlights and shadows. And maybe we can also add a little bit of dehaze and clarity again and just see what happens. Okay, I'm back in Lightroom. I'll read the metadata for all of our files to bring the files to the same state that they are in our time lapse. Now I'm going to develop the first keyframe again. 
where now the highlights and shadows are gone. And instead, let's just use a tone curve on this first image. I will just increase my shadows a little bit here with the tone curve and bring down the highlights a little bit here also. One thing that's very important is that there are two kinds of tone curves in Lightroom. The one is the point curve where you can adjust any point and add points here and delete points also, right clicking and delete. And the next one is this regional tone curve where you just have regions that you can change. Highlights, lights, darks and shadows. Those are quite similar to the tools in the basic panel, just that they don't introduce that kind of contrast flicker. So which of the tone curves should you use when working with LR time lapse? The point curve or the parametric tone curve? You can use both, but the point curve cannot be animated throughout the sequence. That means you can set it on the very first keyframe and just take it along until the end. And additionally, then you can use with the sliders of the parametric tone curve if you want to animate those settings. So in this case, here I will just stay with my point curve because we are having the same edits for the whole sequence. And usually it would be better if you do that before doing the blacks and whites adjustments here, which I also recommend to not do too strong. And now let's try to add some clarity again and some dehaze. So just by removing highlights and shadows from the basic panel from our edits, we got a very, very smooth curve now, even though we added dehaze, clarity, whites and blacks and did all the other edits in a normal way. This time it was definitely the highlights and shadows sliders in Lightroom, which really did weird things to our time-lapse sequence. Let's have a look at another example. Here is a Milky Way sequence that I've edited quite heavily. I've increased exposure, then did the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks to quite an extent, added lots of clarity, dehaze, vibrance and so on. So let's see how this sequence looks in LR Timelapse. So this is the sequence in LR Timelapse. Let's play it back. Okay, there's one flash and this happens here. There seems to be a green flashlight popping up here in the sequence and this causes a really strange magenta cast in the sky and we are going to investigate what's happening here. I would like to eliminate this flashlight just by setting a crop. This is the image in Lightroom now. I'd like to use the profile correction just to see if we can get this out of the frame. Still. Lightroom seems to apply this magenta cast. Let's add some cropping to remove even more of the green. So now the green flash is not in the image anymore and still we have that strange magenta cast. And this is really, really interesting. And at the beginning when I saw that, I was really like, what's going on? And I didn't know why Lightroom does this. I could imagine this if we had auto white balance set on, but the white balance is not on auto. Let's confirm that. This image has that weird magenta cast here because of the green light. And this image has the normal color like we edited. Both of the images have custom white balance 4277 and plus seven. This one also custom white balance, the same white balance setting. Should you think that LR Timelapse is in any case involved in this, let's just take this out of the equation. I'm just selecting both of those images and then doing a sync and checking all settings in Lightroom. So both images will have exactly the same Lightroom edits. This image looks normal, this image looks weird. And in LR Timelapse, of course, we see the same in the visual previews. We have all images looking quite similar and then this one has the magenta cast, although the green flash is not even in the frame anymore. And this shows that those tools in the basic panel really are acting in a context-sensitive way. And this is something that 
we don't really want when editing time lapse. Our first learning here is that the tools in the basic panel work context sensitively. Basically, with the same settings, they apply different edits just because the images look different. And this context, the area that Lightroom analyzes, can also be outside the visible crop of the image. You already know how to do all that detective work, so let's go to LR time lapse and try to figure out which of the settings causes this. Okay, let's try to remove the dehaze. Initialize and now save. Removing the dehaze has indeed removed the color cast, but still we have some big change in contrast caused by the other tools. Let's redo the dehaze, set it to 80, and fill down this column. Now we have dehaze of 80 on the whole sequence, save and recreate the visual previews. Obviously, the color cast is there again. Now let's go to Lightroom. So now you can see we have all the edits, dehaze is on 80. Let's change the color profile from Adobe standard to camera standard. By default, Lightroom starts with the Adobe standard profile, but you can also choose a special camera profile for your cameras. And I mostly use the camera standard profile when editing photos and time lapses. So let's see what happens with this profile. Check it out, the color cast is also gone with the Adobe standard profile. Still we have some contrast change due to the other tools, but at least the color cast is gone. Second learning, dehaze together with the Adobe standard or Adobe color profile causes color shifts. That means you should definitely prefer camera profiles or other profiles, not the Adobe ones. Let's confirm this quickly in Lightroom. We are now here on the image that has that flashlight outside the frame and we are currently on camera standard. Let's change this to Adobe standard. Again, we get that nasty color cast. Let's change that to Adobe color. Again, we get that color cast. Let's change that to camera neutral. No, that looks good. Let's change it even to camera vivid. This also doesn't get us the color cast. Only with the Adobe profiles, we get that shift in color. And then also when combined with dehaze. If you remove dehaze, it's gone. If you increase dehaze, you get the color cast. But on the other hand, if we are on camera standard, for example, bringing in dehaze does not change the colors. Let's try to figure out which of the tools in the Lightroom's basic panel act in a non-linear way. That's those tools that analyze the context of the image and even outside the visual frame, like we saw, to apply their edits. And which of the tools are linear tools that apply the same edits regardless of the content of the images. Of course, linear tools are much better for our time-lapse editing than non-linear tools. For our test, I removed all the edits from the basic panel. That's how it looks in LR time-lapse. The sequence is quite nice. We don't have any contrast flicker. The pink curve is smooth. That means that normally this sequence would be perfectly usable, but not if Lightroom ruins it with its non-linear tools. And therefore we need to figure out which are the linear and which are the non-linear tools. Let's start with the exposure and see if exposure is a tool that we can safely use when editing our time lapses. So exposure is quite fine. It doesn't act in a context sensitive way. Next, let's check the contrast. And as you can already see from the bump in the pink line here, the contrast setting acts in a strong, context sensitive way. That means it increases brightness and contrast of this image just because it has a flash outside 
the crop. Therefore, the contrast slider is one of those that we should avoid when we have such sequences that are not completely smooth, that feature some contrast changes. Next, let's do highlights and shadows. And we instantly see here from the bump in the pink curve that also highlights and shadows don't really act linearly. Not as bad as we would have expected, but probably that's also because we are using them alone in this case without any other edits applied. Let's do whites and blacks. But I will take care not to blow the image. That's why I just increase the whites as much as we don't clip the highlights because otherwise, of course, we will get weird results. And this is interesting now. The whites and black settings are not as bad as we might have expected. They change the contrast a little bit, but not really so much. And I mean, I have used them to quite an extent here now. Next would be texture. Let's increase it all the way. And as you might have expected, texture is no problem at all. Next is clarity. And clarity is really quite bad as you can see. It changes the brightness and contrast of the image a lot. And let's take a break here and try to correct this with the visual D flicker. And this really shows the problem. Although the D flicker really corrects the whole brightness flicker here, we still have the contrast change. And that's something that the D flicker cannot do because those images look really different, although they have the same brightness here in the reference area. And that's why it's so important to avoid that nonlinear tools in Lightroom because they introduce a kind of contrast flicker that you cannot remove with the visual D flicker. I remove the D flicker again. And now let's continue with dehaze. And although I set dehaze up all the way, it performs much better here than we might have thought. But this is because we are using the camera standard profile. If we were using one of the Adobe profiles instead, it would again be introducing that nasty color casts. So dehaze is quite okay when combined with one of the camera profiles. Vibrance and saturations are also okay. Use them to a normal extent. They won't introduce any contrast flicker, but they might introduce a little bit of color flicker. Last but not least, let's try the tone curve. I'll do some quite heavy editing here with the tone curve. Let's see how this behaves. And this definitely proves our thesis. The tone curve is pretty usable, it won't introduce any contrast flicker and you can do all your contrast editing with the tone curve. So to summarize this, contrast differences in your source material can be amplified by certain tools in the basic panel. Therefore better prefer the tone curve as basis for your contrast editing. Also prefer camera profiles instead of the Adobe profiles, especially when you plan to use dehaze. I'm quite sure that this expert tip again was helpful for you. If so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave me a thumbs up and of course write a comment if you want. And then I see you at the next expert tip, which also will cover some interesting details about working with LR time-lapse. See you next time. Bye-bye.